Hey guys, and welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. I thought we'd take a look at the Taito Vulix Diamond Orange today. I know a few people saw me post that I had picked that up a few weeks ago. I really just haven't had the time to go over it, so we'll kind of informally do that today. But before we get started, I, I did have somebody send in a question asking about the power situation in the basement because they see all the cabs running behind me and want to know how that's all configured. It's really not all that crazy. There is a separate breaker box in the basement. When we bought this house, there was a pool in the backyard and the previous owner had run, I guess, a separate line and a new box just for the pool. And we subsequently ended up taking that pool out. It really wasn't all that nice. So there is a box down here that runs two outlets. I, I really only have two outlets here in the basement. Extension cords are doing wonders for me, which I know any of you who are electricians or savvy about that kind of stuff, it's probably making you cringe a little bit. The good news is I don't have all the cabs on all at one time very often. It's just not something that I do. If I'm here, I'm playing one or two machines and I'll, I'll put those on for myself during the weekend. One of the things that has been a saving grace for me are these Kaza power strips. They can connect to your Wi-Fi, and I, honestly, it just really saves the pain of digging behind a machine to flip a switch to turn it on. Makes my life a whole lot easier. So I run an extension cord from one of those two outlets that I just referenced to this power strip, and then from my phone, I have each of the machines labeled, and I can just turn them on or off with the press of a button. It's really handy. They are a little pricey. They're about 50 bucks on Amazon. Sometimes they'll go on sale, but yeah, I mean, it's great to just pull out your phone, look at the machine you want to turn on, tap it and presto, there you go. So that's the power situation in the basement. If you have any more questions about that, definitely let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer them, but let's talk about the Taito Vulix Diamond Orange. So this is a machine I never thought I was actually going to be getting. To me, arcade machines have CRTs in them. I don't do a lot of modern gaming and my heart is really tied to the 90s and late 80s as far as arcade gaming goes. And it didn't really appeal to me all that much. And then I get stuck listening to people discuss this in the Mr. K Discord and I'm like, oh, I do kind of like the new Samurai Showdown. I play that on Switch. Oh, there's an arcade version of that. Uh, same with SNK Heroines and you know, uh, Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 and I'm like wow like wow maybe this would be cool to play on a on a cabinet the way it was meant to be played and the wheels start turning and before you know it you're you're in over your head and where this all went initially is I picked up the Taito Type X3 that was back in the winter and I worked on that a little bit and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, here in a few seconds because I know people will ask I did get this from Ground Zero Gaming he is Furry Force on Twitter, but there's also a Facebook page that links to an Excel sheet that shows current inventory and pricing for cabinets that he can source for you. And shipping is not cheap these days, I can assure you. So I don't want there to be any misconceptions that this was a Scarlet Sprites deal. I didn't pick this up for $150 like I do my other cabinets. This is one I just kind of let myself have. I, you know, I don't know where these will be a couple years from now. I'm glad I picked up the Blast City and the Astro City when I did because those things are selling for anywhere from three to four times the amount of money that I paid for them. And that wasn't even, I don't think, five years ago. So I suspect the Vulix will probably see the same thing happen to it. But anyways, let's take a look at it. So obviously by the title of the video, as well as appearances here, you can see I went orange. Black is really cool, and I do like the blue ones as well, but for me personally, I just like the way the orange popped. The marquee and scorecard areas you can see are still stock, and I haven't decided if I'm going to pick up artwork for this or not. I, I don't know, eventually probably will grab something. I kind of like that it says Vulix right across the marquee. I, I don't mind that too much. I thought about lighting this area up, like it would be cool when you turn the cab on if this lit up because it doesn't by default. And then I started wondering like, what is happening to me? I'm putting LEDs on a cabinet and, and I bought an LCD based arcade machine. Like what is going on here? So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just leave this as is for right now. Going down to the control panel here, you can see this is a one player setup. Now I know the oranges were used traditionally for Street Fighter V. Street Fighter V has a different control panel than what I have here on mine. Yeah, it would have been cool to have that, but I'm honestly not too disappointed at all um, that this is just the stock control panel. It's in really good shape. And on that note, 
The entire machine really is in pristine condition. I took a wipe down rag to this and it, it wasn't even really all that dirty. The insides are pretty clean, dust free for the most part, but it is not nearly as filthy as the Astro or the Blast City were when I got those machines. So that might be one of my favorite things about this machine is that it, it needed no work. I didn't have to do anything to this other than wipe it down. It's in great condition. There's no dead rats. There's no mold. There's no Bondo work needed. It, it's just ready to go. I did remove the leg levelers on this. I actually removed the leg levelers on a lot of my machines and put casters on them. And I know there's a little bit of a debate about that. It raises the machine two inches, sometimes three, depending on the casters that you get. So they're a little bit taller than what they would normally be in an original setting, but I, I don't really care. It wheels and this machine is light. It's so much lighter than moving midway cabinets around, which is another huge perk. I know some people get really funny about the holes on the bottom here in the front. I actually kind of like them. I know that there are some 3D prints and some cool graphics and stuff people use to put on them, but just part of the design, in my opinion. I, I like it as is. So you can see with the monitor off, this actually looks pretty good. There's no scratches or evident damage on the monitor face. And honestly, booting this up, it looks pretty good. I know a lot of people replace the monitors on their Vulixes, but this thing is pretty bright, it's sharp, it's got a really fast response rate for gaming. Obviously, that's what this machine is intended for, so you're gonna stick a great monitor in this. Taito's not going out there half-cocked. And it's only 1080p, but it looks good. I'm not disappointed. Now, there is a website that I'll link below that sells mounts. They're often out of stock or on pre-order, so get them when you can but they help you mount a new 32 inch LCD inside of the Vulix if your monitor is not in great shape. I know some of the older Vulixes, the monitors might not be as nice or as sharp or colorful as the ones in the Diamonds and the more recent issued Vulixes. So now that I got it turned on, we might as well talk about what is running inside of this. That is the Taito Type X3. I picked that up this past winter from Yahoo Auctions. There's a couple different varieties of these. I, I wanna say there's three different models. And honestly, as long as you get one that's working and has the IO on it, you're golden because you're probably gonna be able to upgrade this thing anyway. It's, it's a PC. That's really all this is, it's a PC. The only things that make it different than a PC are the really cool Space Invaders logo that's etched onto the case frame. And then the IO, and that's it. That's really the only two things that differentiate this. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a PC. I wanna say I upgraded mine with an i7 Sandy Bridge processor and I put a new, I think, oh man, I think it's a 1060 graphics processor. I'll confirm that. I will say, I think I got the model that had the beefiest graphics card already in it. It's escaping my mind right now as to what that was. And it didn't have any difficulty at all running Street Fighter V. I mean, it was running 60 frames per second on the test. So, you know, you might be okay if you wanna go that route, you don't wanna fool with it. But if you get one of the lesser models, they're pretty easy to upgrade. I think you have to flash the firmware on the motherboard, which I did in order to swap in a new graphics card. But it's pretty easy to do if you know PCs at all. And a lot of you guys have flashed motherboards and firmware to other devices before. So the other thing I did here was pull the original hard drive and then install an SSD. Now on that SSD, I wrote the Artax multi-image, which I think was version four at the time of me doing this. Regardless, it's running a multi-image and there's some really cool games. The whole reason for me getting this cabinet was because quite honestly, I wanted to play Street Fighter IV, Street Fighter V, Samurai Showdown, and SNK Heroines. I wanted those games to exist in arcade form on a modern cabinet and I have those. So I'm not terribly upset if I never get another multi-image, but I mean, let's be honest, things will surface, they always do, and there will be more games coming out for this. I, I can almost guarantee it. If not now, give it a year, give it two years, you'll be swimming in all of the stuff that is current for the time. Oh, one of the other things I didn't mention was that the controls are connected through the fast IO. There is a way to wire this through JVS, but I think fast IO is definitely preferred. And that's what Street Fighter V typically uses in an arcade setting. So that did come already mounted under the control panel for me. 
And so again, everything was ready to go. I didn't have to buy anything else and I didn't have to do anything to this cabinet. So yeah, overall, I mean, the control panel is in great condition. I didn't even replace the buttons or the stick on this yet. And they actually feel pretty good. So I don't know if this thing was used all that much or just really well taken care of, but yeah, no scratches, dings, overall pristine condition. Like, I mean, yeah, you can go through this with a magnifying glass and find a few things here or there. And on the back, I think there's a scratch or two, but I really couldn't have been happier with getting this and the money that I paid for it, getting it in fully working condition and in an almost, I don't know, I would say this is a B plus A minus condition as far as the body and everything goes. I'm really pleased and really happy with it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what else I can do and get up and running on this machine. But for now, very excited, very happy to be able to play the new Samurai show. I know that's a weird one, but as an SNK fan, it's just so cool to be able to play the new version of Samurai Showdown on a machine. And I'm just really happy about that. So that is the Taito Vulix Diamond Orange. If you guys have questions, I'm sure I skipped over stuff. Something in the last video was like, you look tired. I am tired. <laughs> I, I work a full-time job. I'm taking care of a baby <laughs> and I'm trying to do YouTube. I am tired. So yes, I am forgetting things and lucky to even be cranking videos out. But thankfully people seem to be liking the unscripted format and some of the things I'm just kind of rambling through. So feel free to ask questions and drop things in the comments down below. I'm certain I skipped over something for this. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll remind me in the comments. Thanks so much for stopping by yet again. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and join, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.